Ben Otterdijk. Uh, he is a data and analytics lead at MSF, Medicine Sans Frontiers. Uh, Ralph is responsible to execute the data analytics strategy. With a background in biomedical science, uh, he, he joined UN AIDS in Kenya to better understand the humanitarian sector where he found his passion for data. Seven years ago, a data traineeship in Amsterdam opened Ralph's path uh, with MSF. Today, he's dedicated to maximize the value derived from data across the organization to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of MSF's humanitarian mission. Ralph will explain how MSF has changed throughout the years from an, ed an organization heavily reliant on ad hoc Excel reporting to its current state as an organization with well-established data landscape, which is trying to adapt advanced analytics to steer its humanitarian operations. Welcome, Ralph, uh, who will highlight, a, um, please help me, Help me in welcoming Ralph, who will highlight the major challenges and success encountered during his journey. Thanks, Kate, for this nice introduction. Um, yeah, very happy to be here and talk to you about our journey towards the Sans Analytics. Um, before I start really talking about data, first a little bit of background information to avoid some confusion, because uh, who we are, MSF, if you're Dutch, you might know us as Arthur Sonder Grenzen. If you're English or English speaker, you might know us as Doctors Without Borders. Uh, but if you're French speaking, you know us as Medicine Sans Frontières. Since we are from origin, a French organization, we always use the uh, abbreviation MSF. Um, and I try to use as little abbreviations as possible because they are annoying. But MSF is the one that I will use throughout the organization. If you're wondering if there's any difference, no, it's just same organization, different name. Um, what do we do? Let me quickly look at a few notes over here. Because of course I know what we do, but uh, we are a medical organization that uh, get involved in conflict, violence, or outbreaks, uh, natural disasters, or any other type of health crisis. So really, when there's a health crisis, we move there. And um, so we have uh, different types of aid. For example, emergency care is what we do, um, basic care, Think about modern child care or vaccinations. So it's very, it's a big variety. But besides that, we also help doing famine or sexual violence. We fight epidemics. Um, we care about mental health, but we also do water and sanitation and uh, distribution of uh, supplies. And one important thing that people often forget is advocacy. So we also try to speak out to make the world know what's going on in uh, places that we tend to forget, like Sudan or you name it. Uh, so it's quite broad what we're doing. But what do we do with data? That's where we're here for today. Um, yeah, so I'll take you to our journey towards advanced analytics. Uh, therefore, I start in the past, and then we'll talk about the past. So the start of our journey, the successes, the downsides, um, but also how we, in the end, made a shift or trying to make a shift towards advanced analytics. And then we'll briefly talk about a few things we are doing right now and in the near future. Um, so yeah, the start. Let's say it started eight years ago, more or less, when we centralized our data practices. Uh, so in 2016, we moved to a new ERP system for all our key data, uh, financial, operational, uh, HR, supply. And we started to create a central data team to facilitate the, yeah, to make use of the data. So we did data warehousing and Power BI reporting. It's always a bit weird to say it started back then because there's never a real start. Uh, I myself am a bit of a space geek, and Carl Sagan, I don't know if anyone of you knows this person, but he was one of the most most famous astronomers, and he once said, if you want to start from scratch, you have to start with a Big Bang. And if I want to start our data journey, it didn't start in 2016, of course. There were many things going on before, like ad hoc Excel reporting, uh, which led to the decision to centralize the reporting. But the story for today, I use this as a starting point. So what we do? What did we do? Uh, this was very basic what we did. Um, yeah, just in a simple visual. We extracted the data from Dynamics into a data warehouse. We did data modeling, created reports, and Power BI. Uh, so this is how it started eight years ago. And many decisions we made back then still resonate today. And I will explain that throughout the uh, presentation. Um, yeah, so it was a great step forward. And in the, uh, a bit later, other types of sources joined. So we linked uh, to other SQL databases or Excels or Kobo, which is a survey for the field, or like any other type of data, we extracted it to our data warehouse, created reporting. 
So this was actually quite successful. It was very useful for the organization to have all this data. And by extracting the data from the sources to the data warehouse, we set up automation, wherefore, uh, yeah, we didn't have to do the uh, boring repetitive work anymore. Work was less error prone. It was less time consuming once it's set up and the data was always up to date. So it was already a big gain. And then in the data warehouse, I don't know if many people here do or did data warehousing. And uh, I'm curious afterwards if you have had the same challenges as we are having, but also the same successes. Because in the start, it was very successful with like all the data modeling. We could facilitate reporting. We could handle big numbers. Uh, well, we called it big data back then. Uh, if it was yeah, more than thousands or more than a million rows, which you could handle and we could create reporting based on that, uh, based upon the data. Uh, we could link data from different sources. So let's say HR and supply and financial data. Uh, we could link it in the reporting in the end because of our data warehouse. And it was kind of a central repository for all our structured data. And then the last step was Power BI dashboarding tool for those who don't know it. Uh, the data was readily available to the organization. People could uh, access visuals that people can, can understand. The reports and dashboards are intuitive to use. You could filter to any granularity, let's say on organizational level, but also on one project or one country or for one day, or you could see it on year aggregate. So it was super useful. People really had the data at their fingertips. And it's also easy to reuse the data that you're already having. So it was a lot of uh, yeah, benefits and people were happy for a short period of time. Uh, but I always say that our successes kind of became our downfalls as well. Because after success comes, well, kind of scale up, right? Because people wanted to do, but people were happy, but people wanted to do more of the same. So more departments wanted to do reporting. Um, the departments who did reporting wanted to do more reporting. The reports that already existed had to be improved upon. So if you have one central data team who does all of this, you soon get swamped by work. So that was actually the first step in, well, the, the, the negative aspects of our approach. Soon, yeah, we had to prioritize the central data team, but how do you prioritize if you don't have an overall data strategy? Departments had a strategy and departments knew what to do. Departments had their priorities, but how to set priorities among departments if there's no overall plan? It was quite difficult. Um, and what we did at the start, like we worked in sprints. We told each department, you get three sprints this year, you get three sprints this year. And the year after, the department still expected to have three sprints and a year after as well, and a year after as well. <laughs> so like I said, decisions made back then, they still resonate today. Because um, you cannot, well, we couldn't really take those sprints away from them. But in the meantime, there were more departments coming with those requests and we wanted to help the field more. So it was like all work came uh, from the central data team. Um, and I think this is quite a well-known issue for data, data warehousing. Um, and in the meanwhile, we also wanted to move towards advanced analytics. So that's cool, that's sexy, people heard about it, people had a, yeah, knew how to work with data, people want to move to advanced analytics. But how to do that? That's quite difficult if you're already swamped with work on a day-to-day -day basis. So there were some frustrations. Um, yeah, that's how to solve all this. We had to keep on doing the reporting and had to grow in reporting. But in the meantime, we also wanted to step away from reporting and look into more advanced analytics. And well, that's where the story is about. So it was quite a, quite a journey. Um, first step, because we wanted to facilitate the reporting because it was proved, had proven so valuable for the organization, we thought let's move to self-service BI. Self-service BI means that the central data team uh, facilitate the whole data flow, sets out policies and um, best practices and guidelines to facilitate the reporting. And then a bigger audience, like decentralized data teams, which are within the departments, they could create their own Power BI reports. So via this approach, we hoped that the central data team could um, yeah, push some of the reporting responsibilities to the decentralized teams. and could focus a bit more on advanced analytics themselves. Um, but that's, well, wouldn't say that backfired, but uh, it didn't lead to more time for the central data team. And it, it was a success because more people could use reporting and more there was more output in general. But the central data team was quite well fed up by or occupied by facilitating all this. And in general, I like metaphors. So this is my metaphor slide, my only one. So afterwards, I'm done with the metaphors. Um, but I can, you can compare the self-service with, with the city. Initially, with a small village, but we wanted to expand this village. So instead of five houses, we wanted to build like 
100 houses. We want to do more reporting, so more of the same. So that the organization cool to grow. So from here, we moved into this. Uh, but more reporting, if you have more houses, you want more people to build houses, you need more people to educate, and you need to set up more policies, you need to set up more guidelines, because you all want to have a bit of the same foundation, the same way of working. If you don't do that, you get into a mess, because, uh, well, if everyone is reinventing the wheel, maybe some people do it a bit crappy, wherefore uh, it has to be uh, fixed afterwards. Like there are many, many issues by expanding, or not issues, but new challenges. So that the central data team should focus much more on all the background processes and also educating the organization to use that properly. Um, but it's not just more people needed to do more. All those buildings also need maintenance and well, all, all, all the challenges that are coming with it. Uh, and the infrastructure had to be improved, of course. Because if you have a small village, you don't need many roads. But if you have a big village, you need much more roads. You have much more traffic towards your city. So you cannot do with the current infrastructure. In the meanwhile, people relied on the data, which of course is a good thing, but it didn't fit the infrastructure anymore. We had traffic jams because the infrastructure didn't go along with all the, all the data needs. So we also had to invest in the infrastructure. So what we needed to do was more of the same to facilitate more. Yes? Could you do something about the mic? Because now it starts to get really interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next slide is even more interesting. So you're just on time. Is it better? No, nope. let me. Maybe it's my beard, but no, I don't have my racing. Ah, okay. Okay, is this better? I just keep on asking if this is better until yeah. Okay, okay, great, great. Um, so yeah, we need a better infrastructure to facilitate more of the same. Um, let's see. Now out of my story, but that's just my own fault, sorry. I'll let me quickly have a look over here. Yeah, and all those buildings and the infrastructure, you don't just have to set it up once, but you also have to maintain it, of course. So in the end, the central data team didn't free up time, but they were you know, busy facilitating all this. Was the bad choice to go to self-service BI? I certainly don't think so, because there was much more output. Um, but still, we didn't move into a new discipline, and that's actually what we wanted. Because advanced analytics is actually a new discipline. It's not the same as BI reporting. Um, yeah, so we did innovate for sure. We moved from dirt roads to, to paved roads. We moved from uh, like a horse with a chariot to a Tesla. So we definitely improved and innovated but within the same discipline. What we actually wanted to do was going from cars to planes or going from uh, yeah, low rise buildings to, to high rise buildings. But to do so, you don't just come up with some pilot cases because um, to run a proper model, you also need to be able to maintain the model, have a proper infrastructure. Um, you need the skills in house to maintain those models. So we had quite some issues with, yeah, breaking the, the way of thinking, the vicious circle that we had, like with the reporting, how to move away from reporting to advanced analytics. There were some uh, departments who tried out some analytical pilots and it was quite useful. It gave us some initial insights. It was kind of a teaser. People understood that advanced analytics is useful, but it was often a one-off. The scripts were signed on someone's laptop. If that person left the organization, the scripts were gone. If people wanted to reuse the data, it was a lot of manual work again to get the data into the scripts. So it was not really sustainable, all we did. I don't want to say it was useless, not at all, because it was really giving us a feeling of what advanced analytics could do. But yeah, it was like building a plane without building an airport. So we had to break the circle, but how to do that? And it was quite a, yeah, that's quite a challenge, of course. Um, but this, well, if there's one takeaway from this presentation, I will focus on this slide. So how did we try to move away from the reporting, which was super useful and which we think we should continue uh, doing towards more advanced analytics. Um, and, I don't know if other people recognize this, so I'm also curious to hear from you afterwards if you have the same uh, same milestones as we are having. Uh, but those were actually our three most important milestones, I would say. So it starts with the uh, intention, like, not just intention, but intention captured in a strategy. And not just a strategy for yourself, but enforced uh, within the organization. So approved by management. So as organization, we really said we want to focus on advanced analytics and a lot of other things as well, of course. Um, and with a strategy also comes the position to execute the strategy. That's the position I'm holding right now. Um, as you can imagine, the, the 
central data team of, of one did work. So it's really difficult to. Um, is still him? Uh, no, yeah, the, okay. Sorry. No worries. <laughs> no worries. Uh, no. We're just adding another speaker. Maher found out yesterday uh, that his all of his equipment got locked in the UVA, so he had to uh, beg and plead with the security person this morning. So it's been quite a tough day to get everything together. But I think this is sounding a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> of course, it works very well. So indeed, uh, after that. <laughs> thanks, Maher. <laughs> I didn't notice anything over the last minute changes besides having to change to another location. Oh, so good, good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so back to the story. Besides strategy, you also need a position to execute a strategy. So it's now my responsibility to zoom out a little bit and look at our dots on the horizon, set it, and make sure that we move towards that. And that's impossible, at least I think it's impossible, if you don't have anyone who can zoom out, because then people will stick to the daily operations. And I think any one of us, like every organization has too much to do on a daily basis, your backlog is bigger than, uh, than you want to. So if you don't have the responsibility to sort out and look at a bigger picture, you will not do it. Um, another advantage of this position, um, I can link the different people working with data within the organization. Now I mainly talk about a central data team who does a traditional BI, but we also have epidemiologists. We also have GIS specialists, so we're doing the mapping. It's all uh, different types of data, but still data. And they can also benefit from, well, we can all benefit from each other. So try to zoom out a bit, a little bit and make sure that the right people are connected to each other, that people who have the same initiatives are linked to each other and uh, to be much more efficient as an organization and also the visibility of the data teams. Um, but that's of course great to have the intention to move towards advanced analytics. Another great step, I think, we did was really improving the infrastructure, and not just like I said before, still take more of the same. So move from a dirt road to 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 paved road, but really um, come up with new new parts in our infrastructure, new modules. Like we had a data warehouse at the start, now we have a data lake. We moved from on-premise to the cloud, so I think it's much more scalable, but also safe and secure. And according to GDPR practices and security, we also had to implement a lot, of course, and we're still ongoing. But this facilitates a lot more uh, possibilities. So because of the investments in the infrastructure, we can now host our own models. We can uh, run the models again with uh, fresh data when we need to. So we can move away from those ad hoc one-offs towards more structural advanced analytics. Um, so that's very useful for us if we move towards an, uh, that we hired an engineer. And engineering is now really a position that we hold within the organization, which is incredibly important. And the last one is skill or maybe team. Like this is something I kind of underestimated. I thought in our central data team, we have quite some uh, smart people. Um, I'm not just saying this because they're listening in online, mm -hmm. but I think most of them are quite smart. And they for sure, uh, most <laughs> joking, joking. No, I, I'm for sure. <laughs> I know for sure that they can pick up the skill of, of, of data science, of more advanced analytic. Uh, but it's difficult to learn a new skill if you don't put it in practice. If you just have a training every now and then, if you maybe one day uh, work with advanced analytics in a month, you don't really pick up the skill. And maybe you know how to do the coding, but you don't know how to approach such uh, analytics projects. And that's really something I underestimated, and uh, we, we struggle a bit with it. Um, and also, Again, decisions made in the past still resonate today. We work a lot with sprints, so three weeks for one department and for another department and some variations on this. But I think an advanced analytics case needs a different approach. You don't do it in three weeks for one department, then you move to another department. I think you need to work on it for a month or months maybe. Um, so yeah, we had to really to move away from our bubble, from our tunnel vision towards the advanced analytics way of working. Um, but luckily, we work in a beautiful branch. We don't have to do everything on ourselves. We have partnerships. Uh, people want to help each other, and we should help each other more, I think. Um, yeah, but partnerships really helped us to come out of this tunnel vision and really helped us to uh, yeah, get more data, more value out of the data. Before, like in the past years, we already, already had quite some partnerships, but those were more one-offs. And uh, organization came to us with the best intentions. 
and they want to do some pro bono work for us and they did it and they handed it over to us and we and, and they left but we didn't have the infrastructure to host it we didn't have the skills to create or uh, maintain the, the models uh, now we do have the infrastructure we are developing the skills but yeah it's still difficult to understand how to approach this project and therefore i'm really happy with the collaboration we have with uh, analytics for a better world uh, so don't say this just to uh yeah get more attention from you because i think you already get enough uh a bit more to inspire the other people around here like why is it so useful for us to have a partnership such as the one with um uh and yeah abw for me it's those three things like the sounding board that's for me actually the most interesting one so when abw came to to us and first uh meeting i had with them i thought this is yet another uh yeah, yet another organization with the best intentions who want to help us, but in the end, it's just yet another organization. But it's not because we have a sounding board together. So each time that we think about a certain project and this analytical projects, and we don't know how to approach it, uh, we first get touch base with an uh, ABW, and we talk it through with them. We talk about the approach. Uh, ABW links us up with the right <laughs> partners of ABW, and we come up with a way to. Uh, prioritize the work to see if the work is uh, feasible at all and then uh, see how we can put it in practice so that's great for us to understand how to approach such a project and that's maybe what's most missing at this point for us within the organization then a fellowship uh, some one of us also joined a fellowship last year and was very valuable because you learn uh, yeah you learn a lot of skills but also uh, implement it right away so that's also a great way of the yeah how the collaboration pays off and the last one, co-creation. We don't want a partner to just create something for us, hand it over to us and move away again. We want to do it together. So we also have the knowledge sharing. And that's very important. We want to create our skills in-house. And therefore, this is a yeah, very interesting step. So it's not just create something, hand it over and goodbye. No, it's teach us how it's done. And if possible, do it together. So that's for me what uh, makes ABW stand out from other partnerships. Doesn't mean that other partnerships are not useful, but this is much more structural to me. Um, so, how many still on time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ten, uh, uh, ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. Yeah. Okay. Don't need more, ten more minutes. Just about today and tomorrow. So I told you we have proper infrastructure. We have the the intention to do it. We have a partnership with ABW, but also some others which are useful. Um, what we have done. For advanced analytics, mainly for supply and fundraising, because those two departments, well, they are traditionally more uh, more data mature, right? So they have a lot of data, they stay at operations on data. Um, so we did some projects for them. I won't go into detail right now. I would like to go into the last one for the epidemiologists. Um, I think this is a case that really shows how we can add value to the field, which we don't do enough, because we maybe sometimes too much head part of focus. This one really shows value to the field and how it we do it. I will show you with one quick video. Many countries where MSF works, uh, climate patterns are changing at an accelerated pace, uh, including unprecedented and um, unseasonal flooding or extreme heat and drought. Um, as a result, MSF teams are seeing changes in uh, malaria dynamics um, in their projects, uh, such as increased burden of disease in some areas uh, or prolonged or shifted malaria seasons in others. Uh, MSF projects normally rely on uh, routine epidemiological surveillance uh, to plan yearly malaria control activities and to activate actually uh, malaria response uh, when it's needed. Um, however, this uh, reactive pattern of response uh, can often uh, be too slow uh, or led to effectively scale up uh, operations uh, and responses, uh, especially when changing malaria dynamics complicate uh, preparedness. The Malaria Anticipation Project is focused on anticipatory action. This involves using forecasts to act before the peak is expected, 
using early warning systems. Effective anticipatory reaction could bring a paradigm shift in emergency preparedness and response, as it has the potential to increase the timeliness and efficiency of our operations and to direct resources to the most affected places, all with the goal of reducing morbidity and mortality. It enables choices for teams and empowers them to prioritize better, which has impact beyond only malaria. There is a spectrum of different early warning That's all. Yeah. So with this example, I think it really proves why we should do as a humanitarian organization should apply advanced analytics. And I think this this yeah this chart captures it all right. We can uh, intervene before something really happens. Therefore, we're much more efficient in uh, yeah in in our medical operations. Um, I really love this project, and I have I had nothing to do with it, so I'm really uh, explaining here the well explaining what the epidemiologists did in the past. So in the past, those epidemiologists had the idea. Uh, they want to get insights and seasonal changes and an external party in the UK, they helped them by uh, modeling it. This was before we had a central data strategy and when we were a bit more decentralized. And what I like about this project, at some point, um, So at some point, uh, we got connected with those epidemiologists who did this project. Yes, great. Uh, so it was first like separate from each other, but we as an organization become much more professional with uh, data and with advanced analytics. So we also understand the data team sport. You don't sh shouldn't do it separately. It's not just uh, someone from one department who has ID and does it on its own. We should do it together. It should be a collaboration of the people with the well. How do you want to call it? Subject matter experts or people in the content. Uh, they should work together with data teams and also IT teams to set something up in a proper way. Well, at the present, uh, the central data team got involved and. We integrated the scripts into our own infrastructure, wherefore we can now host the scripts, we can run the scripts, we can refresh the data, so the data can be uh, renewed every month or every year or every week, whatever you want. Uh, and besides just running it in-house, we probably soon have the skills as well to maintain it a little bit, and that also allows us to, um, to, to uh, move to uh, apply it for another situation. Um, so that's already a great, at a value of all the whole journey till where we are today. Uh, and for now, the model just generates numbers. It's a bit, uh, well, just generates numbers, I think is not uh, doing its justice. But in the future, we can use those numbers to, well, use in other uh, models. So this is really the start of this case. We, we now have to think about what do we want to do with the data besides just look at the data and oh, there's a peak coming. Uh, we can run it to another model wherefore we can, uh, Estimate the amount of bed wet, bed nets we need, for example, or where we need, uh, where we expect the biggest peak. So maybe we should start a new malaria facility at one point. Like those are things we can now think about. We couldn't think about all those follow-up questions without having those initial results, of course. And yeah, like I just said, um, we can roll it out to different settings. Hopefully, in the not coming year, but in the future. So that's more how it builds on the horizon. We can create scripts. Uh, we can create models. We can host it, we can maintain it, we can upgrade it, and we can use it in other settings, wherefore it's much more efficient. You don't just do one offs, but you do something and uh, yeah, it has value all across the world. Mm. Yeah, so that's my story about the road to us in the advanced analytics. And suddenly, boom, there was AI, which uh, shook the world a little bit, I think, or at least the data community. Um, Long ago, eight years ago, when we started our central data team, I heard about this quote, which I kind of liked. Uh, big data is like teenage sex. Everyone talks about it. Nobody really knows how to do it. Everyone thinks everyone else is doing it. So everyone claims they are doing it. <laughs> it was quite uh, spot on back then and still is, but replace big data with AI right now. And I think you have the same, uh, yeah, it's still valid. Uh, so I'm really curious to hear the panel discussion, like how other people work with AI. And of course, there are some cool kids who know what they're doing, but in general, people are really blunt with, yeah, 
people don't know much about AI. So I'm really curious uh, if we as humanity can learn from the mistakes that we make with uh, data, with big data, if we can learn from it and make sure that we don't make the same mistakes with AI. But that's not my uh, presentation. So this is it. <laughs> so thank you, everyone. I think we have time for one or two questions. Uh, if you have a question, if you could raise your hand. Yes. Yeah, thank you for the presentation. It's very interesting. So um, now that you make the shift towards from reporting towards more evidence analytics, the quality of your data also becomes more important and gathering more data also becomes, I think, more important. It's that, especially if you want to reuse the numbers in other applications as well. So are you, also working with, with that. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, could everyone hear it or should I repeat the question? Maybe I'm here. Repeat it. Yeah. Repeat it? Okay. Yeah. Also for the people okay. at home, of yeah. course. So with the uh, move to more advanced analytics, also the data quality becomes much more important. Uh, that's the core of the question. And that's well spot on. Uh, that's what we're working on right now as well. And that's also why I that's also part of the data strategy. Like is much more than just becoming more advanced. We also should invest in our data governance because now we have the infrastructure to safely collaborate with external partners. But if they don't know what our data means, then it's still still difficult to collaborate. So data governance we should improve, but also the data quality because yeah, you're gonna do more advanced stuff with your data. So yeah, the quality should improve. Um, yeah, we're making baby steps in this, but it's definitely on the radar to yeah to work on this. Yeah, was that a full question? Because I think there was no. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, I think there's one question online. Yeah. Does MSF combine qualitative and quantitative data? And how do you work with data quality, especially when collaborating with other organizations? Um, we now have a data lake uh, in which we can. Um, or should, should we? Uh, sorry, I will repeat the question again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the question was how we work with structured and unstructured data, right? And the data quality, especially when we collaborate with external partners. Yeah, we now have the uh, Azure Data Lake. And in the Azure Data Lake, we can also host unstructured data like sound or video or um, yeah, images, you name it. We don't do that much yet with it, but we have the possibility now. Um, but yeah, we still data quality structured data, sorry, data quality of structured data is still the issue. With uh, unstructured data, like I say, we don't do that much with it yet. And if you work with externals, yeah. And it's... what about qualitative data? Well, oh, sorry, qualitative data. Um, yeah, we don't do that much yet uh, with it yet. So just a simple answer. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ralph. Okay.